Spoiled rich kids think that they deserve everything. And when they don't get their way, they'll usually throw a fit. And in this case, by throw a fit, I mean commit frickin' arson, bro. Yeah, this story is absolutely crazy. So buckle up and let's just get right into it. So we're gonna call the subscriber who submitted this story, Ryan. So anyways, this was gonna be Ryan's first time ever going to sleepaway camp. And uh, I don't know if you guys have ever been to sleepaway camp before, but it's almost like a little bit of a, not a rite of passage, but it's your first time for a lot of kids being out of the house and away from their parents for more than one day. They might've had something like a sleepover before this, but sleepaway camp is kind of like the next level, right? And uh, so anyways, Ryan definitely was gonna have a very unique sleepaway experience, as you guys can probably already tell by the title of this video. So anyways, Ryan and his parents are, you know, driving up to the, the camp or whatever. It's like camp something. And, uh, you know, he's driving up and he's kind of like, you know, I'm a little nervous about this. Like, I don't know how I feel about it. And Ryan's mom's like, Ryan, you have nothing to worry about. Your father and I went to this camp when we were kids. That's actually the first time we met. I mean, basically Ryan's parents met the first time at the sleepaway camp and then they didn't see each other for like six more years and then they met again and then they eventually like got in a relationship. But so it was very special to them. And they were really insistent that their son Ryan go to it as well because they were both hesitant, but their parents forced them and they thought it was a great experience and they want their son to have the same thing. So they drive up and they get there and they start walking towards it. And Ryan's parents are reminiscing about the good old days or whatever. And they're like, oh, I remember, oh, the dining hall looks just the same. Like, I remember like we met each other and we sat under that tree like on our first night. Or I, I don't know, like stuff like that, right? So Ryan's walking in and, you know, he's a little nervous and he's looking at all these like families around with like, you know, you got the parents and their kids and there's a lot of nervous energy and chatter going on as you'd expect in the first day of an event like this. So anyways, they, they walk up to the table where the person that kind of like the administrates or whatever is like, oh, like, hey, buddy, what's your name? And Ryan's parents is like, this is Ryan, last name. And they're like, oh, Ryan, last name. Okay, let me look. Ah, yes, you're in cabin B. So uh, anyways, uh, feel free to walk over there right now. I think some kids are already in the cabin. You'll meet your uh, counselor that you're gonna be kind of like paired with the whole time. And yeah, Ryan, it's gonna be a great experience. I know you enjoy it. And he's like, all right, like, okay. So anyways, Ryan and his parents, they, you know, they're bringing his like backpack or whatever, or a suitcase, going over to the cabins. And you know, Ryan's dad is like, oh my God, Ryan. Like, I totally forgot. They must have renamed it. Like, they used to have different names for these cabins. But this used to be my cabin. Like, that's so awesome. Whatever, right? So they go up there, they knock on it, the door's opened, and, they, you know, sure enough, the camp counselor or the counselor that is, like, with them is like, oh, what's up, dude? Like, you must be uh, Ryan, right? And Ryan's like, yeah. He's like, all right, all the other kids are kind of already here. Come inside. So Ryan walks that in with the parents, and he sees all the other kids, like, unpacking their stuff, sitting on the bunk beds or whatever, and the guy's like, all right, Ryan, this is your uh, place right here. So he sits down and right across from him is a kid that we're going to call Ben. Ben is the spoiled kid. Little does Ryan know that this is about to be one of the craziest weeks of, of his entire life, right? Little does he know this is about to be one of the most insane weeks of all time, partially thanks to Ben. So anyways, uh, you know, uh, Ryan starts introducing himself to all the other kids and Ryan's parents eventually are like, all right, and we're gonna go. So Ryan hugs them goodbye, whatever. And uh, yeah, so uh, on the first, like before, like the, cause they got there right around like three or four in the afternoon. So it's getting a little bit late, but they're talking with each other. Ryan's starting to get to know the other kids. He seems to really like them at first. And uh, so anyways, Eventually, it's dinner time. They all go as a cabin to get dinner together. And one of the camp counselors says, hey, guys, or the one that the counselor that's like with cabin B is like, hey, guys, so tonight's actually really special. I know that all you guys are new. And I just want to let you know that, like, you know, tonight will be a lot of fun. Wink, wink. So everyone was like, you know, they got a little excited. They're like, oh, what's happening tonight? And so let's skip ahead to then. They're all in their cabins. Right. And it's getting kind of late. It's like nine at night. So they're kind of thinking, oh, is nothing really gonna be happening tonight or whatever. And uh, they see the camp counselors like constantly checking his phone. I'm assuming that he's talking to the other camp counselors or other staff members. Cause it was like a no phones policy except for staff members. And they were really, they were set, like it was like kind of a rule that the staff members could really only be using their phone to, to communicate with other staff members. They couldn't just be going on like TikTok or Instagram or something like that. So anyways, you know, he sees that like Ryan sees that this guy's checking his phone a lot 
And that's when you hear, that's when Ryan hears a horn from very far away. It's like one of those blow horns that like, I don't know, you could make. It's not like an industrial horn, but it's one that you'd like blow into and make a loud, like a really loud noise. And like, he hears a, like a faint horn sound in the distance. And the camp counselor was like, all right, guys, that's a signal. Everyone get up. So everyone gets up and they kind of like, they don't go single file, but they exit the camp cabin in like a group or whatever. And it's dark outside and they see other groups of kids walking out as well. And the horn is blaring. They hear this horn in the very far distance and all the groups of like cabins. So cabin A through X or I, I don't know how many cabins, right? They're all walking towards the woods. And as they walk closer towards the woods, they see a faint, like, burning glow, like a faint burning glow inside the woods. And they all get excited, and they hear drum beats, like, bum, 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 bum. And then there's the horn, like, a and they all start walking in. It's really cool, a really cool atmosphere, right? So they're all walking in, and they're just, like, they hear the drum beats, whatever. And they see, like, a big roaring fire, and they're all instructed to sit around it, right? And Ryan already knows that this is going to be something special. So anyways, uh, the, the leader of, like, the camp counselor leader, uh, we'll, I'm just going to say the president of the camp. I think there's, like, an actual real name, but we're going to say president of the camp. So, you know, she gets up there, and after all the groups have kind of settled around, the drums stop and the horn stops. And she's, she's like, all right, attention, everyone. Welcome back to camp. I don't know. We're going to call it uh, uh, Camp Tree. That's a lame name, but okay, whatever. Welcome back to Camp Tree. This is our 223rd or like 115th year, a very old camp, whatever. This is our 115th year of operation, and we're commencing the like the 116th like, semester, whatever. And everyone cheers, and Ryan's kind of clapping, looking around, like, all right, this is really cool. And the camp, the camp president is like, as the recurring like, kids know, but uh, that we have a tradition every single year. But I, it's time for me to introduce it to the new kids. I would like to welcome you to not only the 116th year of operation, but this is the 50th year of the Camp Tree Games. And everyone starts cheering, and obviously, like, Ryan doesn't know what's going on, but he's like, oh, the Camp Tree Games? That sounds pretty cool. And uh, they're like, yeah, since it's the 50th year, like, that's really prestigious. And she's like, I'll go over very quickly. Throughout this week, at certain events, you will be challenged with uh, different activities and you will be awarded points based on your, you know, the effectiveness of or how well you complete them. By the end of the week, whoever has the most points as an individual will win the Camp Tree Cup and you will forever be etched. Your name will forever be etched in the like the sacred wall or something. She references like there's like this wall in where the uh, the cafeteria is. And when Ryan went in there, he saw this big wall uh, that has all these names etched into it. And she's like, and especially if you win the 50th, that's a little extra prestige as like, you know, 50th is a very, it's, I don't know, it's more memorable than like 42nd or something, right? So she's like a lot of pressure for who's gonna win this year. And, you know, so Ryan is sitting there, and he's sitting next to Ben, the spoiled kid, right? And the spoiled kid's like, where Ben's like, dude, I really want to win that. I really, really want to win that, man. I really want to win that. And Ryan's like, yeah, it'd be pretty cool. So Ryan didn't have any expectations of winning it. He honestly was just like, this is a really cool environment. I'm just happy to be here, bro. Uh, but he's like, yeah, obviously, if I won, that'd be awesome. But I don't expect it because, I don't know, he's new. So eventually, you know, the ceremony ends, and they're like, all right, camp like campers, the games start officially today. Like, the games are officially started. Your first task will be tomorrow. Go get some rest. So they're all walking back, and there's all this kind of, like, excitement, jitters in the air. And I don't know. It's a really cool environment. It's, it's, it's really sick. And uh, so Ryan and, the you know, Ben are actually talking about it a lot. And, you know, Ryan's not super, like, I got to win this. But Ben is really, I got to win this. Like, his mentality is, like, I win this or bust. Like, there is no in-between at the moment, bro. Yeah, so sure enough, you know, Ben is just like really going on about how much he needs to win this and like how this is so important. And Ryan doesn't think that much of it. He at least doesn't think that, you know, you, you guys have read the title of the video, things get pretty crazy, or the spoiled kid has a very bad reaction to potentially not winning, right? But Ryan doesn't realize how serious he is about winning, right? So they get back to the cabin and the cam counselor comes around. And he's like, boys, I just wanna let you know, it would be cool if someone here won the cup because, you know, us counselors do kind of have a little competition of whose cabin's going to have the cup winner 
So no pressure, but it would be pretty cool. But also, guys, remember, there's like 200 kids at this camp. Just have fun. And if you happen to score number one, that's great. No pressure, wink, wink. But uh, if you do win, that would be really cool because I do may or may not have a bet with the other counselors for $50 for who has a kid who wins the cup. So no pressure, but I'm just saying it'll be pretty cool. So with that, they go to bed. Next day, they wake up super excited, super energized. It's just a really cool environment. And anyways, so the first, so they don't only do camp games, right? They have, so there's three official events. There's three official games, which kind of puts a lot of pressure on each game, but also in between that, it is a sleepaway camp. So they spend a lot of time just doing non-camp game activities. So I don't know, learning how to, you know, you go into the, for example, Ryan on his first day was put into a random group of people, no one from his cabin, just randomly, right? And they went out into the woods and they were given a bunch of sticks and they said, okay, you're going to learn how to make a lean-to. You're going to learn how to make a shelter if you need to in the woods with literally just sticks. Yeah, this will not be the greatest shelter, but it will keep you sheltered from the rain or any other, you know, uh, I don't know what it's called, any other like weather conditions or something like that. And Ryan was able to meet some new people and he was just genuinely having a really good time. And the only time that at lunch and dinner and breakfast, every single meal, you ate it with your group, like your cabin or whatever. Just because they really wanted, look, they want you to bond with as many people as possible, but the camp did believe that like, you are go, like the best, like it, you, we, we're only here for a week and we want you to really bond with some people. So we're going to have you have the most time as possible with your cabin. So you're going to eat with them. You're going to yeah, sleep in the same place. Like you live with them, whatever. Right. So anyways, at lunch, you know, the spoiled kid, Ben and everyone there really not just the spoiled kid, right? Ben and everyone else, including Ryan, were just going on about like, they were just asking a million questions to the counselor about the first game. And the counselor's like, guys, I'm sworn to secrecy. Look, I want to help you because I want one of you guys to be the winner. Don't get it, don't get it twisted, right? But uh, I really can't say anything. I might actually get in trouble if I let you know too much. So they're all trying to like ask him like tricky questions. Like they're trying to be like, oh, you don't have to tell us. But if you were going to tell someone, what would the game, what would you tell them if some random person who didn't go here was asking what the first game was? What exactly would you tell them? And camp counselor is like, dude, I'm not the smartest cookie in the cookie place, but bro, like I'm not that dumb, dude. So uh, yeah, they don't really get any good information out of him, but they have a lot of fun trying to. And uh, they're also not allowed to know when the game is. So they can't even prepare for it. Obviously they know they're told that there are three games and, uh, some of the games are group games, some of them, or one game is a group game, which is by cabin. The next game is partner game, and the final game is an individual game. So the idea is kind of like you'll pretty much know off the bat where your rankings are, because like if your cabin does really bad, it's going to be really hard to claw back up, but whatever, right? But they're also not allowed to know when these games are. So the first day ends, like uh, there's nothing, no game on the first day. They're even like up at like nine, 10 or whatever in their beds, like all like excited or whatever, thinking, oh my God, we might hear the horn. Uh, like the game might happen at any moment now, but no, they eventually are like, oh, okay, it's not, we're going to go to bed. And even the camp counselor like knocked on the door is like, what are you boys doing up? It's like 11. They're like, what if the game happens? He's like, okay, I'm not supposed to say this, but look, the game's not happening tonight. Go to bed. They're all like, oh dude, what? So yeah, next day comes around. And they're, they have some morning activities, they have breakfast, but they're sitting at lunch. And they're sitting, like, literally, they're halfway through lunch when they hear the horn. And they all drop their forks or whatever. They're like, oh my god, it's the horn, it's the horn. So sure enough, the horn is going halfway through lunch. They all get up, and the camp count, the counselor for their group is like, or their is it count, camp counselor? Yeah, camp counselor, right, is like, oh, all right, guys, like, this is the first activity. This activity we're doing as a group, so follow me. Everyone's super excited. You can feel it in the air. Things are going crazy. Everyone's really excited, and they start walking out. And uh, the first activity, the first activity is to build a fire in the woods. So they're going in, and each camp counselor for each of the cabins, they have a backpack that's full of, you know, a lighter and some, basically just very few activities, but a lighter and a little bit of like thin 
thinly sliced wood to give like a nice little spark or whatever. But yeah, that's it. So they're all led into the woods. And there was like other camp counselors that would be assigned to your group that would score you based on a preset score or whatever. And basically every single kid in the group would get the exact same score, but one of them maybe could get a bonus point, but that one bonus point really wouldn't change that much. So they get out there and the spoiled kid is super, super intent on, guys, we must win. We must be the best. And, you know, Ryan is trying to win, but he's also trying to have fun. And he also doesn't really know. I mean, bro, does, bro didn't come out the womb knowing how to make a fire, dude. Like, chill out a little bit. So they're doing their best. They're in the woods, and they can kind of see, like, the other groups. But the other groups are far, far enough away in the woods that it's just kind of hard to see what they're doing. But I guess you could kind of see what they're doing, but not really, right? So they're going in there, they're getting wood, they're putting stuff together. And at one point, Ryan puts down a log on there or a piece of like a stick or whatever, or I guess it's close, it was kind of thick. It was kind of closer to a log on their fire. And it, the fire hadn't been lit yet. So it's just a pile of tinder at this point. And uh, the, the, like, the log was kind of waterlogged. So it probably wasn't a good idea to put it on there. But instead of the spoiled kid, Ben, just being like, oh man, I think that's not a good log. He's like, dude, are you trying to like sabotage us? Are you working for the other team? And like everyone in the cabin just like looks at Ben and they're like, chill the frick out, bro. And Ryan's like, dude, sorry, I didn't see that this like log wasn't that good. I was putting something on. He's like, bro, well, pay closer attention next time because all of our points are on the line. And even the camp counselor is like, Ben, like chill out, man. It's not that serious. He's like, it is, it's that serious to me, dude. You don't get it. So anyways, they eventually get something together. They light it on fire, and they do get a fire, right? And they score the second highest points. So everyone, except for one person, everyone is super happy with the result. They're all like, dude, we got the second highest. That's awesome. Like, we got a fire going. I heard half the teams couldn't even get a fire going. And But, you know, one person wasn't happy, Ben. And at one point, like, kids were starting to realize, or the people in the cabin were starting to realize that Ben was sitting there all grumpy, all upset, all angry, and they're all like, dude, like, what's, what's the deal? Like, what's the word, man? Like, why are you so upset right now? And Ben's like, dude, I'm not settling for second. We should have gotten first. And the camp counselor is like, oh, Ben, like, we did really well, bro. Like, chill out. Like, the other team got first place or more, slightly more points than us just because they finished a little bit quicker. And Ben looks at Ryan and is like, dude, you putting on that wet log really put us back like 30 seconds. And that 30 seconds was the difference between us winning and like us losing. And Ryan's like, okay, bro, I'm sorry. I don't know. And the camp counselor is like, Ben, like, come on now. Like, it's really not that deep. We all did really well. Can we just celebrate from here on out? And Ben's like, I guess, whatever. If you guys want to celebrate being first loser, then whatever, dude. And, like, Ben literally walks back into his room and, like, shuts the door, which his room is, like, everyone's room, so it's a little awkward or whatever. Cam counselor kind of looks at all the other guys, is like, dude, what's his problem? And they just decide to celebrate because it's a win. It's a win. So, anyways, the next day comes around, and um, it's just more kind of activities, whatever. And for all of Tuesday, once again, it's just kind of their own activity. Like, it's just no games, no, no camp tree games or anything like that. Nothing that makes, like, points or whatever. And oh, also, there's a scoreboard so you can see your name or your points versus everyone else. That was posted on the... There's, like, a really massive whiteboard. Maybe they put, like, six whiteboards together or whatever. But it was in the cafeteria, and it had your name, and it had your points next to it, just so you could kind of see where you rank next to other people. At the current moment, like, everyone's score was in groups because it was, like, your group... Basically, every group got the same score. So everyone in cabin two was tied for second place, right? But in all reality, they just had the same score. And uh, so, sure enough, the next activity was a partner activity, but it wasn't a just any partner activity. It was a randomized partner activity, which is always a little tough because you don't know if you're going to get someone who is just going to mess around the whole time or is going to take it as seriously as you or vice versa. Who knows, right? So, uh, yeah, it's on Wednesday. It is, you know, right... It's at dinner, and all of a sudden, you hear the horn again. So the camp counselor for Cabin B is like, all right, guys, this is your second game. Like, this is official. So he says, okay, so you guys have all been assigned with random partners. I have a list right here. I'll tell you, like, where your partner is. 
and I'll tell you where you're supposed to go to make this easy, you know, all the, so all the tables had like table A, table B, and that was associated with the cabin you're at. So he basically was like, all right, so Ryan, you're with this guy named Sam and you're at table C, you can go over there. So all the kids started going to the tables they were sent to. And uh, yeah, you were given a randomized partner. Ryan's partner was pretty cool. He was definitely more chill about the competition than Ben was. Um, but you know, whatever, right? So this, so this next competition was that they had to make the best tool possible in the forge, an iron forge. So yeah, I, this is actually something that I did when I went to uh, sleepaway camp, and it's really cool. It's like you get a piece of like a metal rod, you stick it in something really hot, and then you slam it with a hammer, right? It's really cool, actually. And uh, real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment tool down below. I'm trying to make my secret words a little bit more tricky now. You can't just comment spoiled in the first 30 seconds. There is this one guy who gets the secret word, no matter what it is, in like literally 30 seconds, and I have no idea how. Uh, also, if you want to listen to this on Spotify, you can. The link is in the pinned comment and description. And if you're listening to this on Spotify, please rate five stars. I think it helps. So anyways, the next competition was to make a tools with the iron forge together. And whoever, the tools were based on, there's a whole point system where it's like, oh, I don't know, the best, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even know, man. It's like the most tool looking or the most effective, a huge, lot of points you could get. And also, the points for this event were double the points you could get for the last event. So it didn't like make the last event completely irrelevant, but anyone who got a low score because your team wasn't good kind of had an opportunity to, I don't know, get a better score, right? So anyways, Ryan and this guy, they were definitely chill about it. I honestly think Ryan took the best route about this whole thing because he was really just there just to have fun. He was there just to chill. He was there just to have a good time, man. And Honestly, that's the way it's supposed to be. So him and his partner, um, Sam, will say, they just went in there and like they even said to each other, like, I don't really care what our score is. Let's just make something cool. So they go in there. They're having a lot of fun. They shove the metal in the really hot thing and start slamming it into something cool. And what happens is they, they make it too thin. They like they make the metal too thin at one point and it breaks off. And Sam's like, oh, dude, my fault. And Ryan's like, bro, I don't care. Like, this is cool. Like, we just made a, instead of making, like, a hammer, we just made a poker. Like, that's awesome, bro. So, yeah, the person comes over. They're like, oh, look at this. And, yeah, so Ryan and Sam did not get a great score. But Ryan wasn't trying to win anyways. He already won, bro. He had a good time. At the end of the day, like, he knew he wasn't going to get first place because he knew that there's people like Ben who are going to sweat their little butts off to get first place anyways. So he didn't really care, dude. So he had a good time. Anyways, so they start walking back to the cabins. It's nighttime, and they sit in there. And Ben is in this most stink of a mood ever. And after about, like, 30 minutes of, like, aggressive silence from him, you know how, like, some people, like, I, I don't talk all the time. Like, I, like, I do talk when I'm with my friends. But there are definitely times where I'm just, I don't know, I'm either low energy or I just... Don't have anything to say, but you know, you're just kind of chilling there. And then there's also times when people, you know that they're in a bad mood, you know that they're gonna make a big stink over something and their silence almost is like an aggressive silence. I don't know if you guys can relate to that, comment if you can. Uh, but anyways, so he's just like 30 minutes of aggressive silence, making little grunts, whatever, right? Having this big angry face or something. And uh, so eventually he speaks up, he's like, I got robbed. And everyone's like, what? He's like, I got the worst partner ever. He didn't take the game seriously at all. I got, I got, and he started to like tear up a little bit. He's like, I'm not going to win this. And so the camp counselor comes in. He's like, hey, bud, like, look, this happens. Like, it's randomized. You can't choose who you got, like, a partner, right? You can't choose that. However, I'm not totally supposed to tell you guys details about all these things. I'll let you know a little something to make you guys feel better. For any of you guys who didn't do too well today, and just so you know, the next games, I can't tell you when they are, but they are single person. So it's only you. Your score will depend on your abilities alone. And while this game that you're in with a partner was twice as many points as the first game, well, this single game is gonna be five times as many points as the partner game. So 10 times as many points as our group game. So 
Yeah, the, the, it's always been the case that the third activity really kind of depends who wins anyways. And the first two are kind of just to get you to have fun and bond with people. And it really is the last one. But I just thought I'd let you guys know. So almost immediately, Ben is like, oh, so I have a chance now, even though I screwed over by everyone else. And obviously, kids in the cabin start looking at each other because he said, oh, when I screwed over by everyone else, meaning them when they got second place. Like, bro, you could have been put in a different cabin and gotten, like, last place, dude. Like, maybe you could have gotten first place, but you could have gotten a much worse score. Second is a decent score, bro. And obviously, like, you don't need to say that, dude. So, sure enough, Ben is in a good mood. He's out of his stink. And uh, uh, two days, or not two days go by, Thursday. So the next day, actually. I have to make sure I don't just accidentally add like six days to a week or something. Six extra days. But anyways, so the next day, it's Thursday. The event happens on Thursday. So at lunch, once again, they hear the horn. And everyone, instead of kind of having that super excited, this is new, this is interesting energy, people almost have a excited yet serious energy. And Ben literally just has an only serious energy, especially if table B, because they know that this is like, this could literally make or break if someone wins or not. Like you could be number one from the first two activities and it literally wouldn't even matter because this is like 10, so many multiples of points bigger than the other two events, right? So uh, yeah, eventually the camp counselor is like, all right, well, guys, this was actually like, this game was my, like the most fun like game. Like, the first two games kind of changed depending on the year, but this game actually was like it when I was a, when I was a counselor, or when I was a counselor. When I was a camper here, like, we played this as the last game always. This one's really fun. It is a camp-wide hide-and-seek event. And he basically wanted to say, yeah, so, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this either, but basically the winner of this wins the whole thing. So all of a sudden, all the kids were like, oh, shoot, so we got a chance now. And so sure enough, they all are instructed to go to the field. There's a big field in the back of the camp. And the president of the camp is like, all right, campers, like this is the final event. And this one is going to be worth five times as many points. So she says all the stuff that they were told beforehand. And she said, here are the rules. One of us will be the one who's seeking, one of the counselors. If you're caught, you now seek with us. It's going to move really quickly. We will play one round of this. Because we're only playing one round, and because we're going to have so many seekers at a certain point, you are allowed to hide anywhere on campus. You cannot hide in a locked room. You cannot hide on top of a roof. You cannot hide in a dangerous place. But other than that, you are allowed to hide anywhere on campus. In an hour from now, we are going to like set off this siren just if anyone else is not still has not been found yet. If you hear the siren, it's not a trick. Like, you outsmarted all of us. Please come back. Can't leave campus, whatever. Huge violation if you do. You already know the campus grounds. If you hear the siren after an hour, that means we'll do something special to decide the winner from there. But yeah, hopefully it doesn't get to that. Um, go back to your counselors. They're going to give you a little rundown. And then I'm going to blow the horn. And after blowing the horn, you have five minutes to find a hiding spot. So obviously, all the kids were pretty excited. Yeah, so uh, they go back to the camp counselor. He tells them, all right, I'm not going to tell you any of the good hiding spots, but there's a lot of good ones around here. And uh, yeah, so sure enough, the, uh, the horn is yell or the horn is blown, and they go off and they find a hiding spot. And uh, so they're not grouping up. It's all individual. Um, Ryan goes fine. Ryan finds an okay hiding spot. Like, he knows he's not going to win the game, but it'll be okay. And uh, yeah, pretty quickly, Ryan is found. Um, he's like, oh, okay, you got me, cool. So now Ryan is one of the finders. And so it's Ryan and this other kid have kind of like grouped up together and they're going to go around finding people. And they do. And it's kind of like this big, long group of people. So they all walk by, they walk down like the, the, the cafeteria, they walk into the cafeteria because everywhere on campus is open. Some of the buildings are locked and you can't go in a locked building or whatever, but the cafeteria is open. And Ryan, for some reason, is like, we should check that closet. And they're all like, okay. So sure enough, Ryan opens the closet, and who does he see? He sees Ben, the spoiled kid. And Ben just looks at him with this look of, you, you destroyed my chances. And Ryan's like, ah, ha, ha. and some other kid is like, oh, found you, dude. All right, come help us. And Ben is like, 
you didn't find me. He like slams the door shut. And like they open it again. They're like, no, bro, we did. And he's like, no, you didn't find me. He slams the door shut again. Eventually a counselor comes around. He's like, oh, what's going on here? And they kind of like look at him and they look at the, the door. So he opens it up and the counselor, counselor is like, all right, dude, we found you. And Ben is about to scream, no, you did. Oh, because then he sees it's like not a kid. He sees it's a counselor. So he has to agree. Ben walks out so defeated, so angry. He just doesn't look at anyone. He storms off. He storms off to go do his own thing. Little did anyone know that he was about to do something absolutely crazy. He was storming off to do something insane. So anyways, yeah, yeah. So anyways, uh, they're all just kind of like, they're going around and uh, finding people. And that's when they hear the siren 30 minutes early. They're with a camp counselor and the camp counselor has been constantly on his phone, right? Constantly on his phone for like the last two minutes. And they're all like, oh, why are we hearing the siren? Like, isn't there like a little bit more time to go? The counselor is like, yeah, there's been a change of plans. We all need to go to the field again. So they all walk towards the field and they're just like, this is really weird. Like, I don't know what's going on right now. Like, why are the games ending early? Is, did someone like leave campus and they need to shut down for some reason? Like, it's really weird. They're all standing in the fields, right? So kids are starting to pour in whatever, right? Kids are saying, I wasn't caught, I wasn't caught. And like the counselors normally during the sirens, if the sirens were called, they would have cared. Like they would have listened in and been like, oh, okay, we'll mark your name down. They didn't even care. Like the counselors were not even paying attention to who was it and who was caught and whatever. It's like they had something more important to think about, which in fact they did. Little did anyone know. So that's when, so Ryan is sitting or the standing with some guys and they're just talking, being like, what's going on? Like, it's kind of weird. And that's when they hear a kid say, look, look. And so all the kids turn around and he points at the field and he points really far out at the trees. And they see this like smoke coming out from the forest and they see little bits of like fire. They think someone like lit like a, just a normal fire, like in the fire pit, but they see way too much smoke. And they start to realize that there's like a fire going on. And within like, as soon as they realize, it's like the fire trucks come in. And they see the fire trucks come in, which probably took a while because the camp's off the beaten path, right? Fire trucks are coming in. You know, the camp counselor, counselors are like, all right, guys, we need to do roll call. You need to get with your groups right now. So everyone starts realizing, okay, this is really serious right now. So group B is together. There's one kid who is missing from group B, and it is Ben. And so the camp counselor for group B is like, calls up like the staff or whatever. is like, you guys need to come down here. We're missing a kid. And the staff member comes up, whispers something into the counselor's ear and the counselor's face it just is like shocked. The craziest face ever, right? He's like, oh my God. And after that, he doesn't care that Ben is missing. So at this point, Ryan realizes, okay, Something just happened because this counselor was freaking out that we couldn't find Ben, who's in his group. This woman comes over, says something to him. He looks completely shocked, and now he doesn't care that we can't find Ben. Something happened. So later that night, every kid is picked up. All the parents are grumpy or angry that they have to come a day early because they have to change their plans. The fire was spreading a little bit, but thankfully only one or two buildings got hit. I think one of the cabins got hit. A lot of trees took damage, but the fire department was able to get in there just in time. Before Ryan left, do you remember his friend Sam? So his friend Sam and I were chilling, or he was, Ryan was chilling with some other guys, and his friend Sam came up to him because they were all sitting in the cafeteria, whatever, waiting to be picked up. And Sam's like, dude, you're not going to believe this. So Sam goes on to tell him, that through other people and through various reasons, he learned what happened. Basically, Ben, the spoiled kid, was so unbelievably angry that he did not win the number one place, that he did not win the cup, camp tree cup or whatever, that he went into the kitchen and he found all the, the, like, the lighters, lighter fluid, everything flammable, anything to make a huge say, a big middle finger to the camp basically. Got all the lighting supplies, went into the woods and just is doused everything with as much flammable stuff as possible, started lighting stuff on fire, and honestly would have gone on a tear through the entire woods, through all the buildings, 
That's when he was caught by one of the counselors who was, like, doing hide-and-seek or whatever. This counselor apparently, because, like, some other kids were with the counselor when they caught Ben. That's how the word got around really quickly. And so this counselor apparently, like, tackled Ben. Like, straight up tackled him, took the lighter out of his hand, called for backup. It's like, kids, stay back, stay back, whatever, right? All these other camp counselors come rushing in, whatever, to this location. They call the fire. Crazy, right? So Ryan never hears from Ben again. Ryan goes back the next year because he loved his experience up until that. And apparently all the kids who went that year got like a bit of a, if you want to come back, we'll give you 10% off type deal. So his parents were like, okay, sure. Maybe there's not going to be another arsonist kid who shows up this time if we're lucky. But uh, yeah, um, Ben obviously was not invited back. But the legend of Ben, the kid who got so mad that he tried to burn down the camp, lives on till this day.